Hello, everybody. It's Chat with Al. We're here with our good friend Anthony Crooks, the creator of Glory Days Boxing. And we have a special guest, a world champ, too sweet to be sour, a tower of power, Keisha Fire McLeod, the champ. Thank you very much. I love thank you very, it. Thank, thank you. you very much, Keisha, for joining us. Anthony, thank you for setting this up. We're very excited to have Keisha Fire McLeod on here. And I'm going to just turn it over to you for a bit, Keisha. And you can tell us a little bit about yourself. And then Anthony will direct the interview. And I'll look at the chat and we'll get some questions. Thank you very much. Oh. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. This is actually my first interview in probably about a year since the pandemic. Wow. <laughs> so I'm a little rusty, but um, a little about myself. Born and raised from Brooklyn, New York. I am, I guess, what I just found, maybe a snowbird because I'm living in Miami now during the cold weather, but I plan to stay here for pretty much the rest of my life. Back and forth. Um, so you're not gonna miss the winters at all? No, not at all. There's so much I'm not gonna miss about New York, but then there are certain things that I am. But I think the, I think the things that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna miss about New York outweighs <laughs> what I am gonna miss about New York. <laughs> but um, boxing, yes, I'm a professional fighter. I've been boxing since 2002. Turned pro in 2009. My last fight was. Uh, a year and a half ago, actually, maybe about six months before the pandemic. It um, must be it must be tough when the, when the pandemic started for for you to get like even get your training in, your sparring and and and, and matches. So that's yeah. got to be difficult. Oh, it's really tough because because I'm from New York, where we were like the, the epic center of the pandemic. Yep. There was no sparring. The gyms wasn't open for most of the time. We were the last phase to be open. And currently now we still can't spar in New York. Oh, gee. Wow. So yeah, other if you, I mean, like I have a full-time job as most female fighters, because you know, the income is not, you know, it's not the same as the men. So most of us has to work, not just part-time jobs, full-time jobs to support ourselves. So we can't. So you, you really, you really do to do that. You really love the sport because it, it, it's that's incredible to me. Because like you just said, it, it's almost like the old school football players back in the fifties and sixties. We just, yeah, you, you know, you have a job and you're still doing the, the sport of you're doing boxing. And, exactly, which is a job too. Absolutely, it's, a, it's a, so it should be a full time job, but um. We can't really afford to leave our nine to five or whatever position, you know, our job here to go off to a state that does allow spar. Like some of the guys that you see that's fighting, you know, a lot yep. of these guys, they, they're millionaires or they're making a lot of money, you know, they don't have to work a full-time job so they can go and fly here, here for training camp where they can spar, you know, as most of us, not all females, but the ones from New York, you know, we're pretty much just stuck in, 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 in limbo trying to figure out where we can spar going outside under the bridge somewhere and you know creating a little sparring thing so hopefully now that i'm in florida because you still can't spar in new york and i believe you can spar here in florida i haven't gotten a chance to check out the boxing gyms yet but i believe you can though so you must be excited about that yes once i get myself a little more situated yeah i'm still waiting for my furniture to be delivered <laughs> So if you hear echoes, I think that's why you said. You don't no, I just realized that. I just. I'm in an empty place. It, it's, yeah. So. It's and tell us a little bit about about your your website that I it, um that you have Keisha Flyer Keisha Fire McLeod excuse me dot com. Yes. So that website uh, basically just lets you know who I am, what services I do offer. Um, there's a bio there. Um, it's not like I really go back and check all the time, like at my website. Um, but I think my experience, I do a boxing experience for Airbnb. 
I, I believe that's one. And there's some cool photo shoots, pictures, you know, things I've done. I, um, I love the magazine cover. The, oh, so that was Metro. Metro Sports? Metro Sports Magazine. We put that as our as our uh, thumbnail for this stream. I, I loved it. Oh. So I, I put it, hopefully that's okay to use as a thumbnail. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so. I'm a cover girl, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that was um, that was done some time ago, some years ago. Um, they actually took that picture. That's not a shot that I shot for the magazine. So they used that picture. Of course, they got permission from the photographer or whatever because they really love that shot. And I had no clue it would make it into the front cover. It's a great shot. I, I just I, I love that. Thank With you. The in the air, just awesome. Because I think the, the the issue before that one, I was in the magazine, but not on the cover. And they just did like a bio story, whatever. And then like the next issue or maybe the issue later, they they put me on the cover of that issue. Well, that, that's just congratulations, first of all. Anthony, I'm going to turn it over to you. And uh, uh, thank you very much, Anthony, again, for setting this up. And thank you, Keisha, for being here. And we're going to have a fun time. So. Thank you. I do it. Hey, um, <laughs> really, where I want to start, because it's one of the more interesting to me paths that led someone to boxing, is tell us about your start in boxing. It was really related to a movie audition. That's right. Um, Terminator. <laughs> I think it was the Terminator 2 or 3. It's whichever, um, which, whichever one and when they were looking for the female Terminator. So at that time, when I was pursuing uh, modeling and acting, uh, boxing was not in my mind at all. I didn't even watch, just didn't even watch it. I wasn't a fan of it. So I was doing a lot of commercials at the time. I had landed a great manager and she was sending me out on so many auditions. And then she sent me out for, she said, hey, there's a, a, a new movie that's gonna be shot and maybe in about six or seven months down the line but it's for the Terminator and they're looking for a female. And she said, they want a brand new face, no one famous, no one unheard of, because they want to be able to say they discovered this, uh, this, this actress or whatever. And they didn't know what ethnicity they wanted. They were saying like all types, going to different states, countries or whatever. So I went on the audition when they had it in New York. Um, I ended up giving a call back which was cool, but for these kind of films, you have to do a lot of callbacks. It's not just one or two times and you get the job. So what they told my manager on the feedback on the audition, they told her, oh, we like her, but you know, she's just a bit wavy. You know, and I'm like, wavy, you remember, I'm not a boxer, I didn't have, I was, <laughs> my arms were like this skinny, like stringy and long, not athletic at all. So, I guess I was like, what's we feed? They said, well, basically stringy and bony. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> but she said, the good thing is when they, they're going to return to the New York and do and have callbacks from people that they like, if you can bulk up in the arm area by then, which we, I think it was supposed to be like two months down the line, um, they would consider seeing you again for on camera um, audition. I said, oh, cool. Okay, what can I do to target that area of the arm to look more muscular? Because she said this character is going to be holding heavy artillery, so it has to be believable that you can handle this. This is why you know they want you know you to focus on your arms. I said, what can I do that I can actually enjoy besides just lift weights all day and <laughs> and buck up? So I thought about boxing. I'm like, wait a minute, if I go in and hit the bag, you know, it sounds fun. I'm working on that area mostly. Why not? So I walked into the gym, a boxing gym, and um, I fell in love with the with the uh, environment. You know, I just fell in love with it. Guys, no shirts, no whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, and I'm just like, okay, I, I don't even. I want the part, but even after this, if I don't get it, I'm coming back here. So, <laughs> so long story short, I went in, started working out on my own. A trainer came over, a boxing trainer came over. He had a group of girls that were boxers, and apparently he took them all over the state and country to compete in the amateurs. And he came over to me and he said, hey, you ever thought about competing? And I'm like, in boxing, I said, no, I'm an actress. I don't want to mess this up, and no, I'm not interested. So he just started talking to me. He started talking to me. This is big guy telling me about 
female boxer and then the way he was talking was so eloquent and he was like this big you know muscular guy and then he said you know what you don't seem convinced i'll tell you what if you train with me for a month see if you like it he said i guarantee i can make you a champion in a year i don't know what they meant but it sounded good <laughs> I said, champion it sounds nice I didn't think about the punches or nothing. I just said, you made me a champion a year. Wow. Okay. I said, all right, whatever. Let's, let's do it. And then less than a year, I won my first title on the amateurs, like maybe eight months. So it was a rush. Every That fight was a rush. You get the little trophy to give you and you want more, you want more. And then that's how that started. Do you, do you remember <laughs> your, your very first sparring experience against another competitor? Yes. Were you, you must have been nervous for that. I mean... Way back, I did a little sparring back when I was younger, and it just was always like it. I, Anthony did a little bit of uh, boxing, also. It, it, probably like the first first time you get hit, you're like, okay, I better wake up. At least I know, like, okay, this is real. <laughs> I remember my first sparring. Yeah, uh -huh. it was with a teammate. Thank God, because I probably would have died if it wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> and she called and she called herself saying she was working with me, but it didn't feel like she was working with me. <laughs> and, 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 so she was already a, like some state champion. Um, she was closer to my weight at the time, but really short and very cute. I never, I, know, I didn't seem like she was a killer. You know, <laughs> but I knew she was good because I knew of her um, achievements in boxing, but I've never seen her in action. And I had to spar with her. My, my, my um, trainer was like, okay, you're gonna be sparring such and such. And I'm like, okay. I spar her, I was nervous, of course. And I, I thought I did okay, but I know I remember me feeling really upset because I felt that she knew I was brand new. We were teammates and she was just trying to show off. I thought she was trying to show off. So she, you thought she might be taking advantage of you a bit? Right, yes. Okay. I thought she thought that I was taking her spot because I was supposed to be work fighting her weight class. And, uh, and she just wanted to put her stamp on her, on her weight class. And I, I don't know what, I just felt she was taking advantage and it was unnecessary, like the, the kind of sparring she was giving me. It wasn't a straight sparring, she was my teammate, you know, and it was my first sparring session. And I remember being in the, going into the locker room and I was so mad, like I had tears coming out my eyes and she came over and I, when I get upset and got tears, I don't, don't talk to me. I don't want to be talked to. I don't care if you're trying to console me because you're just going to make me upset. And she was trying to console me, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you probably use that with, you put this up here. Motivation. Oh, it, right, yes, Anthony. Oh, I'm going to remember it, this. <laughs> it did. And I calmed down. We had another talk and, and I'm going to actually like her. And, you know, she did a lot, you know, like very caring, gave me a lot of talks and pep talks and everything. And um, yeah, she she, she ended up becoming a, a at the time we I haven't talked to her in years, but at the time we you know we came good, you know, good. teammates. I so, said so, yeah, I learned a lot from that situation. Uh, I I remember my first sparring session, which was almost shit, almost forty five years ago. <laughs> but you're right, it's it's we're going to work light, and I was like, if this is light, I don't even want to know what heavy. Is. Yeah, they, they, when they tell you, oh, we go to work, they always say that. No such thing as we going to work. No. Yeah, we going to work light. <laughs> how, once you started to take it seriously, how was the acceptance? Because obviously you're at a gym too with a lot of male fighters. How were you accepted in that environment? Oh, in the beginning, uh, when I went to Gleason's, because I didn't start in Gleason's, I was at Kingsway. Kingsway is no longer there in, in Manhattan. But I went to Gleason's and the, I, I was getting talked about, but not in my face. It was like behind my back. They would call me um, Black Barbie, you know, and, and say like, I don't look like a fighter. Or there was this one trainer that used to taunt me all the time. Big, big guys, name Limp. Um, and he used to always taunt me, tease me, you know, just say stupid things. But I, I got, and this was on a photo shoot. I was actually doing a photo shoot at the gym. And they didn't know I was a boxer. They thought I was just for train, a model for train a boxer. And after that, I had to get out of my mind. I was out of my mind and I was trying to be professional because these people were from, um, I believe, Italy. No, it was France, France. They came to New York to do the shoot. And I cursed them out. I, I couldn't take it anymore. I ended up cursing him out. And I think that in, in front of the whole entire gym, the whole, the whole crew, <laughs> 
And from that day on, no one bothered me. He told me he couldn't believe that he was just like, I'm, it's, we're good friends now. He ended up becoming my trainer later down the line. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, wow. down the line. <laughs> yeah, and we, that's the story that we always talk about. And, so, and then he, he told me, he said, this girl was crazy. He said that the way you curse me out in front of everybody, as bony as you are, I knew that you probably could fight. And if you couldn't fight, you might kill me. <laughs> he said, I didn't but know any you earned your stripes that day. Yep. Right. So I guess like since that moment on, they they didn't see the the black Barbie. They actually see the real fighter because I, I got real Brooklyn. And I guess they would say real ghetto. Well, you, <laughs> you're, you're you're in there training. I, I, I mean, you know, they, they shouldn't have said stuff like that. But some people, like you said, some people are yeah, gonna yeah. gonna say stuff like that and. You, I, to me, from that, you handle it quite well. You, 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 you know, you ignored, you ignored, and then finally you had enough. You confronted it. Yeah. Situation ended. Uh, the, the guys, they love me. I never, I've always had many, much support um, throughout my career, especially when I turned pro. They will always buy tickets to my fight, support me, be the first one to say congratulations and support me. It, it just, it's been a great experience as far as being. Well, finally getting accepted, you know, in such a male dominated environment. But um, I didn't really have much problems. And if anyone else still did tease me, it never came to me and uh, to my face. It just stayed behind my back. <laughs> so, so boxing, pretty, it seems like you picked up on it really quick. That yeah, you, you obviously, maybe you didn't know it, you had athletic ability when it came to boxing because that's for someone to come over. And it might have just been at first they you know they see your look and you look nice and you're okay. But a boxing trainer, they want someone who can fight. So you, right. you, you had a, a how would you say it, Anthony? Uh, an aptitude. That thank you. An aptitude for that. When did you real? When did you like the first time you hit the bag? Or the first time after you sparred? I didn't. When I hit the bag, I just went in there to get some muscle in my arm. Right. I, I didn't, didn't know I had any kind of natural attributes with my trainer told me when he met me he just saw my physique that's what yep. that's what um what attracted him is for me um becoming a good fighter because i'm so thin long and rangy yep and, and so he he he's he had compared me to tommy hermes you know um that's what he compared me and he had me study him because he told me i had the, the physical attributes to become a champion if i used it correctly and he would train me how to do it that is very interesting keisha that now that you said that because i you know i i went on your website but i see that i know you're tall and rangy that's very interesting that he brought up tommy hearns wouldn't you think anthony i mean that's a perfect i two two comparisons i thought about same thing but she has great length yeah especially for her weight and Hearns, and then I also thought of Mark Breland and okay, also Mark be. Breland out of New Mark <laughs> Breland, gold medal, world champion. Yeah, he was a tall, tall exactly. range exactly. fighter who's exactly. a trainer now. Breland's a trainer. So wait, speaking of Mark Breland, so Mark and Bre Mark Breland, him and I are, are really good friends. Oh, cool. He trained me for my pro debut, my uh -huh. three first pro fights. He was my trainer. How was he to work with, if I may ask? Hmm? How was Mark to work with, Mark Breland? Oh, he's, I, I love Mark. The only, I would say, the only uh, challenge I had with working with him in the beginning, but I got used to it, is his low, soft talk. <laughs> his voice, he's so, he, so, he's he, so he, low, low spoken. Soft very spoken. calm. Right. But we had similar styles, you know, and all he did was make sure he was so focused on my dad. Yep. You know, just so focused. And he, said, he would say, you should not need to be touched at all. Like, no. And we would work jab, drills all the time. He was great. I went to Panama with him. He was huge out there in Panama. They loved him. Uh, <laughs> we would get stopped all the time. And uh, I have a funny quick story about that. This is so funny. Because Panama is like a huge boxing, like oh, yeah. they love boxing. Out oh, there. absolutely! And we will walk everywhere. People want to stop him if we like, I was, you know, boxing. Especially when I had to fight, I had to go to press conferences and things like that. And they will always stop him. And I'm the fighter, you know. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and one time this guy came over and he ran over, so like excited. And he's like, he didn't speak much English, but he kept, he brought his phone over and he's he was 
pointed at um Mark in his like photo, photo, photo. And you know, Mark always does this. He does this to everybody though. You know, like that. <laughs> so he goes like that. So he goes to the guy, he's like, like, yeah, like, sure, photo. Like that's his way of you know, saying yeah, photo. And then he said, no, no, no. He said, take the phone. And then Mark took the phone. Then he said, take a picture with me and her. That's <laughs> like, funny. Her. And Mark was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> He's like, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's funny. You're like, you're that not the star funny. here, Mark. Stop. <laughs> that is funny. Awesome. Great story. That was, that was like you. in 2010, I think. That, that, this is like the most funniest fun story that I have come to Mark. Me and Mark. So, so we stopped training because he got the gig to work with Deontay when he started training Deontay. That's why we stopped training. Because and and I, I, I see Mark's influence in you because you have a great jab. He had a very, a very nice long jab. And yeah. I'm going to say something for Mark. I know he got heat for throwing in the towel and Wilder's fight with Fury. You know what? I respect him even more. Absolutely. For exactly. Man, Wilder cares about his fighter. Why? Exactly. Wilder was going to take, and I'm a big Deontay Wilder fan. But he, that night he wasn't, wasn't ready. His night. That wasn't his and night. He, and had he done it, that probably more than likely would have been his last fight. Uh, he took tremendous punishment in that fight. I agree with Anthony. You don't see train very rarely. I was lucky enough to meet Emmanuel Stewart way back when, God rest his soul, at a boxing event. Very nice man. I always remembered he had a fighter. I can't remember the name. Limited, obviously a good fighter. He fought out of Kronk. He's from the South. Um, uh, what I can't, Mike, it's not his name, but anyway, the long story short, I remembered when he got the, the, the boxer, a, a big money, you know, a big money fight as he could get. And he told, I remember what he said to that guy in the corner. He goes, I'm going to give you one more round. He goes, I know you're giving it all. He gave him the one more round. And, and it, the father was also in the corner with him, the, the, the boxer's father. And he just turned to him. He goes, that's it. You don't come here to get. I'm paraphrasing. You didn't come here to get killed. You did the best you could. I always respect that. And, and, and Anthony is so right. I've watched many a fight where you sit there. Why would you send your guy or, or male or female, your boxer out there to get hurt? They're not going to win. Maybe it's not their night. Maybe it's just the competition. They'll never beat this fighter. But yeah, I, I, I hats off to Anthony for bringing that up. Sorry to interrupt. A great story, by the way. The pan, I love the, the panels. Back to you. To keep <laughs> Mark got humble a little bit with that picture. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. It that was so was. funny. Uh, it, it's so funny. And I remember we used to spar too in the ring. And um, he called himself taking, you know, not wanting to put a head gear because he was sparring with me. And, and I'm like, you sure you want to put a head gear on? Oh, he's like, for you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, for me, you know. And, and, and we, I said, okay. I'm sitting here and I'm trying to do the jab. I started hitting him, started catching him. Then the next round, when the bell rings, he went over. He told somebody to go get put the head gear on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, "What happened?" He yeah. said, <laughs> he just started laughing. It was so funny. Well, <laughs> those are two. First, thank you very much for sharing that. I love that story. My <laughs> quick question: So you've been to where else have you been around the world? So you're in Panama. Were there any other locations uh, around um, the world? I'm in Mexico. I've been there quite a few times. Um, I actually lived there for a few months doing a boxing reality show out there, um, which was fun. But I realized how fake, I, I mean, kind of always knew reality shows was kind of scripted and, and not real. But to be there, like to actually see it is wow. But I got a free vacation there for like two months in Mexico. <laughs> um, uh, what's the other country? I forget the other country um, near Mexico. Uh, I've been, um, as far as the country, just those countries. There's a, there's a lot of boxing in, in there. Oh, absolutely. Big oh, boxing. Oh, Dominican Republic, I forget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dominican, yep. How did you, how did you get, quick question, how did you get that reality show? That's very interesting. So, um, the weight class for that reality show was for 125. I'm not 125. I fight like 110. And, uh, was 106, 110. But, they had already cast, but they were looking for one more female. It was just like USA against Mexico. 
So it was like two teams and we're going to Mexico to compete with their team, to fight their team. And then the last one's supposed to be written this big amount of money or whatever. Um, Cause it's a reality show. They don't, they're not really focused on skill so much. They more so focus on personality and looks or whatever, you know, cause it's a reality show. They want to TV show. Yep. Right. So they called my trainer asking not, this wasn't Mark. This after my second trainer ended up becoming my first trainer. His name is Marco Suarez, you know, out of the Bronx. Great trainer. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. He's my current trainer now. They called him looking for, and he did have a, a couple of fighters, but he said, no, if you want, he said, I have a fighter. She's not 125, but she's better than, you know, like some of the girls that I have. And she's more, you know, more personality. And then long story short, they, I met them or whatever, and they liked me and they, and they flew me out and, and I ended up becoming a cast, cast mate, cool. which was pretty cool. Yeah. Congrats on that. That that's mm -hmm. huge. I mean, you're world champ. That's a huge accomplishment too. But so now, and then we'll, I got to ask one more question, Anthony. On the reality show, because I like reality shows. I watch like I do too. I <laughs> yeah. uh, was a big Beach. Housewives of Atlanta fan, by the way. I watched that one too. I My favorite that franchise is the one from Beverly Hills. Though. What? what, <laughs> what? <laughs> What did you, we can get a little TV insight here, folks. You know, everyone should appreciate this for future. Thank you very much. What did you find, like, wow, I didn't think, you know, like, when you were on that reality show, what was one of the things you went, wow, I didn't think they did that, <laughs> or something like that? Um, oh, okay. I thought that the, um, the, the fight outcomes would be, like, when you, if you win, you won. Yeah, they already know who they want to win. Oh, we, we, they know how to edit it to make it look like you lost. Even wow. you know, so if you're the one that they want you to win, they, it was a real fight. Well, actually, being there, actually, bro, they're not yeah, yeah. supposed to throw the fight or not the punch or whatever. They they don't tell you that. So you go in there to believe in that you're really you know fighting and you you know you feel you won you you got the win. No, they already know who would win. So when they started editing and then you realize. You know, at the end, and they announced the winner. Something was just not right. Wow! It's like obvious to the audience. They don't care if the audience, because these are like audience is looking confused. They didn't know they were watching a reality show. They thought they were actually there for so fight. You, you're obviously fighting the real fight. The two competitors, the two right. pugilists, and with the editing, they're not showing the the whole fight. They, they know how to edit it very well. They're going to show you. Like yeah. highlights of the rounds, and right. then this is the winner. Wow, that's interesting because there was a reality show, boxing reality show for men. Sugar Ray Leonard and Sylvester Stallone sponsored it the first year. And I remembered watching that, and they didn't really show the whole fights until the last episode where they actually had a fight card on. I want to say NBC. Um, but that's interesting. Thank you very much for sharing. Yeah. I was just curious what that that's very interesting. That's that's yeah. And, wow. and, and the, the the reality show did air, and it didn't air. I mean, unless you had like Telemundo or whatever. I still right. never seen the fight. I mean, never seen the show. I just saw a bunch of snippets, and and and, and uh, it, it, they changed the name. Yep. When I was on it, it was called Recto de Campeones. Yep. But then, no, it was called Total something or whatever. And, and then they changed the name. They never told me they changed the name. That's why I couldn't find it. Yep. And then someone would tell me that, oh, that, oh, I saw you on, on, on this reality show. And so I knew it, it aired. I didn't even know it aired, actually. So it was in Mex. This reality show was aired was in Mexico and then yes. on Spanish cable stations. We'll exactly. Say. Okay. Right. That's still so that's how that is. I still never was able to see We'll have to look stuff. that up later, see if we can see that. Yeah, I, I went on. If I can remember the old one, because they're there, you see trailers. Like I'm in the trailers and stuff like that or whatever. But it's on YouTube somewhere. I had a hard time looking for it. I really did. And I found it once and then I tried to look for it again and then I had a hard time finding it. I don't know. Then they made a men's version afterwards. But I can tell you one thing, that experience, it was like I felt like a, they had us like we were superstars. The way they treated us out there, like we were like mega superstars. They had our banners and posters everywhere on buses, and it was it was a great, great, fun experience. But oh, that's awesome! The manipulation—it was just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but it was fun. It was fun though. It, it, there's definitely a difference between Mexico and America. And I'm actually going to touch on that a little bit uh, later on in this, but I wanted to talk to you about your accolades. So four time New York Golden Gloves champion, which is no joke. When you win Golden Gloves <laughs> in New York four times, that's legit. That's tremendous. Tremendous. Three times Empire State Champion, yeah. uh, competed in two ringside world competitions, and of course, WIBA World Champion as a professional. So, first of all, you made your trainer's prediction come true, winning your first Empire State title in less than a year. Mm -hmm. And when you moved from Kingsway to Gleason's and working with some of the trainers they have there, did you see that as a way then to grow your career at that point where you're getting more serious about boxing? Well, yeah, it definitely was. Um, I stuck with the same trainer throughout my whole, the guy that recruited me, name mm -hmm. is Lee Shabaka. Um, he trained me throughout my whole entire amateur career. Now, when I was transitioning to pro, that was something different. I mean, that's a whole nother story, but um, that's when I started training with Mark Breland. And um what was the question? <laughs> it was, was the move to Gleason's, you know, at that point you saw that as a way to kind of grow your career. Right. Yeah. So I was bored to Gleason's uh, just a little after being at Kingsway, like maybe less than a month. Oh, okay. So I was already like the, the trainer that I was working with, he, he trained at Kingsway and he trained at Gleason's. Okay. Gotcha. So he just bored me because I was, you know, supposed to be a fighter. He's like, I, all my fighters train at Gleason's. And like his regular clients, you know, like who's not fighters, just want to get his stay in shape and whatnot. They train at Kingsway. So that's so how I transitioned the, to Gleason's. The other gym was more like a get in shape, regular right. people. Exactly. I got you. Kingsway was more like regular. Well, you know, like Anthony said, you made you made him look good. You made him look good. <laughs> I mean, four-time Golden Glove champion New York. Was it three-time Anthony Empire? Yeah. Yeah. Th th that's... Yeah. Let's no, let's talk yeah. about that. First of all, Gleason, some of the trainers there, Hector Roca. Yep. I mean, and and he was he in Canada, was, he was in Mexico with us. He was one of the um he was a USA uh, USA coach. Hector Roca for the, the, the reality show. <laughs> and there's also um Juan Laporte uh, as a trainer there. I ran I Barkley. Oh, that. from the Bronx, I ran yeah. Barkley. Yeah. Tough, tough middleweight, super middleweight, lightweight, light heavyweight. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're around a lot of legends there, you know, training, basically. How's it like working with them? They're so funny. They're so, they're like funny. Uh, I ran, we, we, we're, I guess I would say I'm like the little sister that we're just, just have fun, you know, because I used to go to camp. I don't know if you're um, familiar with the fantasy boxing camp like Gleason's whole annually. Yeah. Right, so I was a camp coordinator for that um, for some, for some years because I used to work at Gleason's. And I would go there with all of them, you know, Juan Laporte, Mark Ruland, and Iron Barkley, Carlos Ortiz. You know, they were always the trainers that came every year. So I worked right up, you know, close with them. And we would have fun, just drink sometimes, you know. Mark didn't drink, but like, Mark does. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll uh, have fun and just, just. I, Iran looks like he can party a little bit. Um, he can, but he was more like, all right, I'm going to my room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like that, but you know, he, you know, Juan was more of the, you know, he liked to hang out, you know, and Mark would too. But um, yeah, I mean, we just just have fun, you know, just like sister and brother relationship, basically. I, I was gonna I was gonna ask that did they treat so they did treat you like a younger a sister, a younger sister, a younger yeah. sibling. Yeah, That's like when cool. they see me training, they may come over, you know, they know they're not my trainer, but you know, they will always show me tips and, and, and tricks and things like that. You know, sometimes they were legal in the ring, but if the if the if the ref didn't see it, it is not cheating. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just want to say a hello, hello to a couple of folks who are in the chat. I'd like to say hello to D. Scott Howard. He says, happy Sunday. Hey. And Keith White. Also, Keith asks, and we're going to try to find it. Um, he wanted to know when we were talking, he was real interested in the about the reality show. He wanted to know what was it, and, and that's what we were talking about. I don't know. There's probably a slight delay. But uh, we'll try to find that, Keith. 
And if I find it, I'll, I'll put a link. Oh, uh, what was the name of the key? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you could try to Google or search Recto de Campeones. I okay. don't remember if that's the new name they changed it or was that, or if that was the original name, because I know they had a name and they changed the name. And it was in Spanish, you know. I'm, I'm you know, estoy aprendiendo español and the bill intermediate IELTS. I'm learning Spanish at intermediate level now. So, <laughs> Lua, so yeah. I don't know if I'm, I think I am saying that title correctly. <laughs> so we all, we also have one more uh, tribes fan just uh, Todd B excuse me just jumped in he said finally someone on the chat with Al that has style <laughs> grace and is cute lol hello Keisha I thought I, he was I, talking about me really I thought, he, I thought he was talking about Anthony and myself <laughs> Thank you, Todd. hello Todd B well. we're with you there Todd absolutely hey, it's been a, a, fun, a fun fact about your four golden gloves and here's the deal. Gleason's has an impressive list of champions who've trained there. I mean, uh, Ali, Holmes, Tyson, Hagler, Graziano, LaMata, Sugar yeah. Ray, uh, Leonard, Basilio, Pryor. So it goes on. Arguello, you are the only fighter at Gleason's to have won four New York State Golden Glove titles. I mean, that has to be pretty special. Oh, well, mm, kind of. There, we do have another four-time Golden Champion, her name is Salia Lamania. Lamania, oh. she's the heavyweight world champion. Um, Mark, I don't think he was from Decent though. Um, he did, he's a five time Golden Glove champion. Yep, tremendous but, amateur, Mark. But not, from, not from Decent though, even though he did, you know, did training and whatnot there, like was a trainer there. But also, let me try to think. Um, I think, oh, and there was Jill Emery. She's, she was kind of there before my time. She was a four-time Golden Glove champion also. Oh, okay. So but, let's just say the females have the most Golden Gloves. <laughs> they sure do. Was, it, was, there, was there any thought, and again, the time period, I'm not quite, did you ever think about possibly going to the Olympics? I'm trying to think when women's, women's boxing started, it, when I yeah, started. Yeah, that was like after I already became pro. Okay, that's what I, yeah, I was that's, trying to remember when that actually. Yeah, we didn't have female boxing in the Olympics when, at my time. Cool. And I want to go back to um, the Terminator 2, kind of a, an offshoot of that. Yeah. Uh, Hillary Swank actually trained at Gleason's for her role yes. in Million Dollar Baby. Did you get a chance to work with her? No, because I did not know at the time that she was there training. She would come there early in the morning and oh. I trained in the evening. And the, the first time that I heard that she was training for this movie was at one of the Golden Gloves. I was in um, Madison Square Garden. And where she came there to see, she was in the audience and I was sitting behind her. I was sitting with my dog. <laughs> oh, she's quiet. She's quiet, I don't know why. But um, she, she, okay, so she, she was in the audience where at that time she was dating um the room of the actor and it was another famous actor that she was dating at the time they both were sitting there and she was there to see her training partner maureen shea who was her sparring partner for the movie and she was fighting in the golden gloves that year i was fighting that year also so she went to watch her and this wasn't matter of fact um yeah this was in the um in the finals I'm sitting behind, didn't know she was there, and we're, you know, we're watching other fights, and we're like making fun, you know, that's what we do, watching fights. Ah, and, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. Oh, and laughing, making fun. And apparently, she was, she was like laughing at us because everything we were saying, joking, she was laughing at us because I could see her go like that, and she's like, oh my God, you're so funny. You wanna... And then someone said, what well, I'm like, is that Hillary? And then I was like, Hillary, and I was just like, oh, I, I like her because I'm, you know, I'm an actress. And, um, one of the movies that I really loved of her was Boys, Boys Don't Cry. I think it was one of the movie. And another one, um, who was the other one? With, with Angelina Jolie. Um, well, anyway, oh. Angelina Jolie won an award that year for anyway, that movie with Hilary Swank. But <laughs> someone said, yeah, she's training for this movie called, I didn't know the name, they just said a boxing movie. They didn't know the name of the movie. And it was like, I listened. I'm like, what? I can get some <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently she was already finished, you know, she wrapped up that training and whatever and blah, blah, blah. But the girl that she came to see did not win that night. So they, she, that girl that she, they came with a lot of, she came with a lot of people because. She, she should have trained with fire. <laughs> she should have. Just say. <laughs> no, too she didn't win that night. <laughs> too sweet to be sour. <laughs> 
So that was what? why I didn't know that she was, that's, that's the night that I realized that she was training for this movie. And that's I thought I would awesome. definitely switch my schedule. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bobby Cantilano, how you doing? Hey, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. In and uh, Keith says, yeah, that, that, that was Boys a Boys Don't Cry, yep. Basil got like you meant that's the name of the movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love Keith's that always good for the facts. Absolutely. And you know, kind of transitioning women in boxing. How? And I'm, Al go. Al knows this mini rant I'm about to go on. Logan Paul or Jake Paul is fighting Ben Asker next week, and that's going to get bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars and. It, He's such an embarrassment to the sport when you have women who work hard, train, do all the work. How do we expand the recognition for women in the sport? Because I know in different countries like Mexico, you know, you fought there. It's a lot different in terms of the accolades and recognition you get. Mm -hmm. So is it corporate sponsorship, bringing money in there, putting women on higher positions and, you know, bigger fight cards? What's what's it, your thoughts on that? So, yeah, it, it, it would, it's definitely the sponsorship, you know, like they tend to just sponsor like the, the Olympics when it comes to female boxing. But as far as the pros, it's kind of hard because they feel like the women, this is what they're saying, which I don't think is true. But it's, you know, women don't draw in the same type of numbers that men drop draw in. So why would a corporate put their money in big money that they, you know, they put on men boxing and they don't get that money back the thing is they're not it's, it's just backwards because if you put you it have to promote it, it though yeah you, if you have it promoted we see it we need you, the, 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 the money to do that how, how can we draw in the numbers if we don't have the, the same promoting the same you know um sponsorship and things that way it's 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 it's, it's crazy because it, it's funny because i there's like i'll give you an example when i did a campaign for bobby brown bobby brown is multi-billion makeup cosmetic um i don't know if you ever heard of it but she's right side by side with mac if you know mac um, beauty products you know makeup or whatever so i did a campaign for her she loved me she was great i ended up getting a job because she read a story that was ran in the new york times that i did and she asked for people to come find me and she found me and they, they found me her people found me at Gleason's. and um so i did this campaign or whatever and then when it was in her book and then afterwards, did even touring for her book. I, I went on NBC to promote her book or whatever. I sent Bobby Brown, like, I had this big fight. And I sent them, well, my, my um, what were they called? Mark, marketer? What, what is it? Mark, it marketing, like, promo. No, the, the, let's think start with a P. The, the people who, um. Publicist. Huh? Uh, your publicist information? Yes, yes, publicist. <laughs> right. So they sent out a package to them and whatever and see if they could sponsor because I could wear like Bobby Brown. Yep. You know? and, and listen, the brand that I was promoting was called Pretty Powerful. So that was, was perfect. That was it was perfect. And they came back and basically in nice words just basically said that they thought it was too brutal for the for the for the for the um the image is it's, it's too brutal. I, I it, you know what I mean? It's just like <laughs> you had me, you hired me because I was a boxer. No, that, that, and you see that, that would have been a perfect fit because you see a lot of male boxers now, especially like in Europe too. They're like billboards sometimes with the stuff that's on their, on yeah. their robes, on their trunks. Is, is that there like Morgan billboards? Yeah. yeah. There was even a time, and Anthony might remember, I'm sure Anthony remember this. I don't know if you were following boxing. They literally would have. Not a real tattoo, like you something know, like painted on their back. Phallus on your back. Like Remember? I mean, and yeah. then, they, then the promoters stopped that because what happened was they were going the promote the people for the advertising. Like literally, they would paint a billboard on their back. I'm not lying. Yes, I see that. Mm -hmm. And they were basically going, "Huh, we can pay this boxer, whatever, say ten thousand. I don't know what it was, X amount of dollars." That's a lot cheaper than us trying to really. And and the promoters were like, "Yeah, you got to stop this because." the sponsors of this stuff are getting upset that they've paid X amount of dollars. And this guy's putting like on a billboard on his back, but it would have been a perfect fit. I, think. I thought so. I, I, it, it was like, so I'm like, here is a, a product that actually promoting beauty and powerful women. Right. 
you know, so what 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 would um something else that has nothing to do with why would they promote, you know, like why would they want to invest in their money? It just doesn't make sense. I I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you, do you quick question, uh, female box about female boxing? Do you think if there is a because the, the the female boxing matches I've seen have always been on a card with male fighters? Do you think if there was just a, I mean, I know why they do that because they want to get the crossover and you're going to sit and watch the bout. Because to me, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes it's tough to me watch two women bash the living snot out of each other like well you know well, god that when men do it, it it's not as bothersome to me because i've i've fooled around with boxing right. do, you, do, you, do you think it's a if they had a, a women's card well what's it fighters who are, are are like you know match each other well to give off a good show which i have to be honest some a lot of the fights i've seen in women boxing i've seen a lot of good ones and i and i i they've been on undercards i i, I don't know anthony if you'll agree some of them are just brutal i mean like wow they're brutal i mean brutal and a good i mean they're going for it they're working hard um like ann wolf and in, in yeah. one of the best KOs ever in boxing history. I love uh, so and do you, I you to meet her also. I, and I guess Anthony, you'll get to this, but I'm just um what you go ahead, ask the question. I'm gonna ask like what uh what do you think can be done, I guess, to help uh, the sponsorship, like Anthony said, is is huge. Well, and, and they do they do have completely female cards, but I think part of that is I'd like to see women elevated to a higher position on, you know, men's cards as an example, like uh, the Joe Smith fight last night. That was a hell of a main event. Have the semi main event, a, you know, a high level women's fight because people are going to watch that to get to the main event. The Joe Smith oh, fight, yeah. These, these ladies are talented, you know? They, Absolutely. they have done that. I mean, I'll say I, I was, okay. So when I won my world title, I was the main event on that, on that show. But it was a small, small promoter, you know, and it was in uh, Queens. And then you have um, other fighters. I think Heather Hardy, she, um, her and Amanda Serrano, I believe, um, headlined. But I think they were the co-main events, though. But they really got a lot of publicity because they fought at Madison Square Garden, you know, yeah. and they were the co-main event. Um, it's still, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's like. Every few, you, we still don't, people forget that because it's not as many of headliners. It just have to be more of them. It's, it's too sporadic at this right. point. Right, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's still, even though, so people tend to come up, like, oh, I've done this for them. I've done this for them. You haven't done it enough because people don't remember that. And people are still coming to me and saying, oh, they never had let a woman. And they have, but it's just not enough. It's, it's just not enough at all. It has to be something that's, Constantly, you know, even if it was 30, 30 percent more would, would be better than because I would say it was just like five percent. Well, and, and maybe even more fights in other countries. And I'll, I'll bring up the the uh, fight you had for the WBC title against Ebeth Zamora. I oh. watched some and, and she she's tenacious. Um, and you had a shoulder injury in that fight, I believe, as well. Right. I had a shoulder, in, a shoulder injury. I didn't want to pull out of the fight because that was a fight that actually gave me a little, gave me a, gave me a coin. You know, <laughs> you know, I got paid a little bit. It, it is it's nothing to write about, but compared to what I was getting, paid it was a good before, payday. Right, it was a good payday, yep. and I just I I just saw a win win situation. Whether the outcome, I saw a win win. I, I would be ranked in WBC. Um, you know, ranked win or lose, I'll still get ranked and um get my money you know and some recognition because you know it was a huge fight i believe it was a co-main event but the thing is i had no clue i was going to be the co-main event no i just thought i was on the undercard or whatever and then not only that they only allowed me there a few days and you know how the altitude is a complete difference from new york to mexico you need a good almost two weeks to really, really get, you know, your acclimated to the altitude. So not making ex ex uh, excuses. It just, nothing was in my favor from getting, but I kind of knew it and I still trained hard. I still trained to win. You know, I, I went there 
feeling that I would still win no matter what. But um, when I went in the ring, I had a shoulder injury, but I, it was on the right. But I'm more dominant with my left. I have a good jab, something that I can, you know, keep her away with, with the jab. That, like you said, that girl is tenacious. You need more than a jab. <laughs> well, but, you know, again, that was such a great opportunity. And I saw some of the pre uh, lead up where you did the public workout. The fans over there absolutely adored you. Even as you were yeah. coming out, they're high five and you. They were, and they were really, like I said, she was even sweet. She was really nice. I didn't speak English, but she was very respectable. Um, the people, the fans, they love, for them, they do love their people, but they didn't disrespect me. They made oh, me feel good. welcome. Um, one guy after the fight came and he drew a picture of me. He must have went to one of my press conferences. And while I was up there, he was drawing and he gave it to me after the fight as a oh. gift, which was, that was really sweet. And, and even one guy came up to me before the fight. He's like, you know, we, we love our people. We love our people. And, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, we root for our people. But I still want to wish you the best of luck. <laughs> and, you know, thank you for coming out here for the fight. You know, it was just like really, really great experience. Although the outcome did not come in my favor, you know, would I have done it again, knowing what the outcome probably would be, I, I would have done it again. Well, I, 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 I have to agree with your decision making. One, payday. Two, exposure. And, and you get ranked. Um, no, they, uh, again, not that anyone cares about my opinion, but you, uh, to me, you did the right thing, you know. Yeah, I didn't feel like I had anything to lose. It, it, it was, I was never the fighter that felt like I wanted to protect my record. You know what I mean? Like, the girls, it's like, you can't go off by a female record. That's one thing you can't do. When you look at a woman's record, you can't go by it. That it's, it's just because it's not as many of us to pad each other's record. That, know, that, that, I mean? I'm gonna just put this up real quick. Bear with me a moment. Keith White, because it's a great segue that you brought this up. Keith White asks, are the number of women boxers in the hundreds, thousands, or how and how many weight classes? Oh, um I would say it would be you talk about like worldwide. Or? I would say in the thou. I mean worldwide. My guess is in the thousands. Did you say you say in the United States? Oh. Probably not thousands. Right? No, no, definitely not. But no. worldwide, definitely. If you want to include the amateurs, you know. But um, what was the weight class? It's the same weight classes as the guys. The guys, yeah. Yeah, it's the same. So be beyond uh, beyond fighting at this point, you're doing you're doing the the camps and you're doing some Not training. Anymore. I, I don't do the camps anymore. Oh, you don't? Okay. Oh no 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 no! I don't work for Gleason's anymore. You know that's when I used to work for them. Oh okay. Do, yeah, do you do, do you have an interest in doing training down in the future at all, or in the future? Oh, I, well, I, of course. Um, this I have quite a few more fights in me. It's just about me settling down to the. The right gym. Um, I'm I'm gonna still be going back and forth to Brooklyn. I mean to New York, so I'll be training there. But um, I have to find someone solid here where I'm at, and I'm glad that we can. I'm almost positive we can spar here in Florida. Right? I, I think you're right because Florida's more opened up, right, than, than exactly. some states. Well, well, and spe yeah. speaking of that, Jake Paul that I don't like very much. He's down there actually now working with uh, Jorge Masvidal for his fight. Where, where? Do you know where, in Florida? Um, I think Masvidal is out of Miami too, I believe. Hmm. So, but yeah, I, I know there there is sparring down there from that. But yeah, I don't oh, want. Good to, to know. Very good to know. <laughs> mm. I have not sparred in like a year. I really miss <laughs> it. So um, we wanted to talk about some of your outside the ring stuff, your acting commercials and whatnot. I mean, you have the list is. Tremendous of what you've done, Style Magazine, Reebok. You mentioned the Airbnb. So was modeling and acting, was that kind of your first love coming out of high school? No, no, I, that, that wasn't something that I wanted to do anyway. My mom was, she was acting and she was a singer also. And um, she used to take my sister and I um, to her theater classes. She was, she was in the theater. And we would just sit there and watch her, you know, train and, and then she would be in plays. and. And her teacher or instructor told her, why don't you have to put your, your girls into acting or whatever? They sit here and wait for you, you know, because it's something they can get involved. 
And then basically he gave us, gave my mom a two for one deal for us, to, you know, to train there in the theater. And that's how we started in the theater. And I realized that that's something natural. We had also acting and stuff. And um, we were doing plays and, you know, things that way. I actually went to my first audition, which was a film, even though I was a theater actress. And I got that, I, I got, I got that part. So I, when I got the part, it was a film. Um, it was a student film. And um, that's how that started. It was from my mom just watching her in the theater in, in the arts. And you, you were in uh, Love the Hard Way, right, with Adrian Brody? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Love the Hard Way. And Adrian is a really great guy, too, really nice. And um, I was a hooker, hooker number three or two. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, you, you were actually, you were hooker number one, but I was he actually- looked it up, he told me this. To see one of New York's finest, not hooker. Come on now. <laughs> well, that was, that's my credit name on IMDb. <laughs> oh, and listen, although I had like, they call it under five, and that's like, you have under five lines, but you get paid pretty well when you even have a speaking role in a movie. And they give you a trailer. That was my first, actually, it wasn't my first time getting a trailer, but they, they I had a trailer. They gave me my own That's, trailer. It was funny because on the door, it don't have my name. It says, hooker number one. Hooker <laughs> 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 number one. And they, that's, they give you a trailer so and you have a quiet space to learn your lines. But I only had, I got the trailer. Should I say it on my line? Because I remember my line. It was sure. my, my line was to Adrian Brody. You know, I, I had to walk up to my, my pimp. He, you could see him going, get, 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 get over there across the street, get that money. So, <laughs> so I walk across the street, I go to his car, and I bend down, and then I say, and they put, they added echoes on it too. I said, hey, baby, I got the best ass on the point. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having to say that line over and over and over and over and so that you have to like they gotta do it. That's too like, funny. Go, go. <laughs> it was funny. Then I got to go to the wrap up party after they finished, you know. Oh, cool. You know, so all the cast members go to the um to the party and I hung out with Adrian at the party and and you know, we're just talking. I remember having a conversation about cans and why they don't this is before they started putting the tops where you could just pull the can off. You know what I mean? You know, the, the can, like can food. Yeah, yeah. Before they start making the tops and that, I had a conversation with why <laughs> they don't put tabs where you just pull it off and you need a can opener all the time. <laughs> so I just remember having that conversation with them. That's too funny. <laughs> so I, I think another first, the only world champion who's ever solicited sex from Adrian Broden. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm it pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, how, how, do you, how do you compare your preparation for it, it's kind of similar if you think about it acting the preparation you have that's, to work that's what i was going to say oh, well, go ahead. No, how do you compare a day at the gym to a day on the set i bet they're both grueling but in different ways right well you know what when i started boxing most of my acting and jobs has been boxing related or athletic uh, athletic related you know so it was like wasn't so much of a transition much really, you know. It's like my body started to change. It was becoming more like very athletic. So I really couldn't do a lot of the high fashion or, or, or couture wear, you know, anymore. It was more of a, you know, because my arms, they weren't, you know, it was thick. Yeah, Terminator so, arms. Right, so I started doing things like Reebok or Adidas, you know, things like that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and I we we watched your uh, short film Shadow Boxer, and for three minutes you packed a lot into that. I like found it to be gritty, elegant, pain, oh. sensual, all at the same time. So, what was your inspiration for that film? So you talking about the black and white, the short one? Yeah. Okay. With the dancer, um, I really really like that one, and it, and it's so short, but we worked almost a week on that film, and it, it was just. I don't know. I just brought myself to it. It was just, I, I, it wasn't nothing, especially I didn't have to read lines or remember any lines or anything like that. Although I had to just improv, but you don't hear it when you do it. So basically I got to kind of be myself and it was very, uh, it was different because, you know, I got a little dance in there. The guy that was playing, I guess, the, the lead in it also alongside me. 
he was a dancer and an actor. So it was, it was, it was something, I don't know. It just like, it was different. It was different, but yet still myself. And I, I honestly, until I saw the film, I didn't think I was going to like it. So I, I, I did. It starts very raw where you're at the basketball court and they're yeah. the players kind of flirt with you and you're like, spit yeah. on. <laughs> you know how many times I had to do that spit? It was like, <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, it, it just didn't, it felt weird because it's like, she said, don't worry, it's going to be, when it pulls together, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. It just, like, it just, like, even with smoking, like I had the cigarette, I, I don't smoke. You know, it's like I've never smoked. It was just like everything as far as the spitting, it's not me. But when I got into the dance part and that, you know, the part that was me. I love that part. You know, that it, so when I saw it, she actually won an award for that, um, for that little piece too. For that oh, cool. Mm, nice. Yeah. And we so we should nice. actually put that link in the chat. Yeah, I'm gonna try to um I'm gonna try to find it. I just don't want to mess up this stream, I, which I won't. I'm going to look for it right now. So we have, uh, I guess you want to do some questions from the chat. Keith's got a couple more. and Keith had asked, uh, do judges, and I, I, I think it's the same scoring system, Keith. He's just asking men and women's, is a judge the same way? Exactly the same way. So the only there's only one difference when it comes to professional fighting for female and, and, and male is the limp the time in the rounds. Yeah, two minutes. Women go two minutes. Two and, minutes. Right, and the women go three minutes. Also, for world for title fights, you know, the men goes twelve rounds. Men go ten rounds. I mean, women go ten rounds, not twelve. But there are countries that you can have the option to do three minute rounds too. Really? Cool. Yeah. But my thing, I'll tell you my my opinion on that. If you pay me the same amount of money that you would pay the men to go to twelve rounds, right? The same twelve rounds. I'm not fighting any harder or any longer for the for the for the for what you're playing me for ten rounds. Right. Why? <laughs> I would do the same. Totally. I would do the same too. <laughs> because you got some woman that want to prove that, and it's true. We can fight the same amount of rounds. We can fight three. We, when we train, we, when we spar, we're, they don't change the bell for us to, to spar two rounds or whatever in the gym. We spar three rounds. We don't and even you, sit down. You and spar with three. men too, correct? We spar with guys. We spar with you know different weight classes. You know things like that. I don't understand why it's got to be different. But the thing is, the reason why it's different is because they don't spend the same amount of money on that bout that they do the men bout. So if they give us three minutes and longer longer rounds. They have to pay for those rounds. I, I I would agree. If you're if you're 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 putting your here's what I've always and I've told us, they don't just have to pay us, they gotta pay the officials. It's not yep. just the fighter. They if they if they have us going twelve rounds, they also gotta pay the officials for working those extra rounds. And then inspectors, they it's more money for them. That's why yep. they're not gonna pay us to do twelve rounds. It's not that they think that we physically can't do it because we're women. It's that's more money for them to have to spend for the longer rounds. Interesting insight we're getting. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I didn't. That part I never even thought of that part. But you're you're absolutely correct. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, yeah. you know, they, you know what I mean. So, do you want to uh, you want to close up? Is there any more questions or anything you have, Al? Before we uh, let her go? No, I think. Um, well, Keith, Keith says, is that the most polite term, Anthony Hooker? Number, I think he's talking about hooker number one. When you said I was going to say well, New York's finest, come yeah. on. <laughs> but um, I got paid good money for hooker number one. And then there I, you go. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I just that's like why to you say, had that number one after it. Come on, man. I, I just yeah, like to I, say thank you for telling me that. I forgot I was actually number one. <laughs> it was three of us, but I was in number one. <laughs> I just like to say thank you very much. And I'm going to give it over to Anthony, and then I'll close out. So go ahead, Anthony. So we, we like to do our Mount Rushmore list when we end these boxing chats. So do you you follow boxing now pretty closely, correct? A current uh, fighter? Not lately. <laughs> so if you could take a Mount Rushmore, your four favorite or four best current active fighters, who would you put on there? And I'll, I'll go first. Uh, so I would go with Bud Crawford, uh, Canelo. 
Earl Spence Jr. And I'm going to add one of the new young guns uh, jumping into the top four, Tiafimo Lopez, who I think Love Lopez. is a generational fighter who's going to be an all-time great by the time he's done. Anthony, so, I'll just say I agree with everything you just said. And now we'll turn it over to Keisha. I don't know if I can name four, but I'm going to try. But I'm going to tell you I like Giante, um, Javante Davis. I like Errol Spence. I like Terrence Crawford. Did you say him also? Yeah, Terrence. Oh, you did? Okay. I called him Bud. <laughs> oh, you did? Um, uh, I, I think I can only think of three right now. And what? pastime fighters? Can I say pastime fighters? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I've got that too. Okay. Of course, Tommy Hearns, Sugar Ray Robertson. Um, he passed away. Um, Hagler. Yeah, he's one of them. Not him. The, oh. um, Diego. Um, the, he fought. Corrales? Diego, he passed away on a, um, I think a motorcycle accident. D D oh, Salvador Sanchez? No. No, that's. No, that. Diego, Diego Corrales. Corrales Diego, Diego Corrales. Diego, okay. yes. Tall, tall yes. junior yes. lightweight, yes. lightweight, yes. action fighter. Yes. fighter. Oh, my. He was in ne – wow. Never in a dull fight, that guy. Oh. I always said he never earned enough money because oh. those – again – He was a little underrated also. But oh, he yeah. He amazing. was very, very good fighter, very action-packed. I can't remember. He had wars with – I can't think of the guy, but my God. It was – they're just – I want to say the guy was from Brazil. No. Osquedo Fritas, maybe? I can't. Anyway, but yeah, great. Wow, I forget. Yeah, he did pass away in a, a motor. Early age, yeah. Otoro yeah. Gotti is another one that passed away. Uh, it was one of my favorites past, past time. And um, Sugar Ray Leonard also was one of my favorites. So, so my four there, Hagler, I, Sugar Ray Robinson I got. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, how can you not? Iconic. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to go way back, uh, Willie Pep, and, and I put oh, him wisp. Oh, okay. Willie the Wisp. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I can't dis disagree with anyone that you guys said. I, I, I like my, my two of my favorite fighters, Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano. I like Joe. I, I was lucky enough to meet Joe Frazier. Um, uh, I got to meet him also. And, and, you know, and again, very nice man. God rest his soul. I enjoyed my brief little. Again, I've told this to Anthony, you can't fake nice kindness. You know, it, it wasn't, he took the time, you know, had a nice little interaction. And I always remembered that. Um, what, what, what just, it doesn't have to be off the top of your head, Anthony Keisha, what was one or about you would have liked to have seen, you know, like that actually happened that you would have liked to have been there, seen it live. The, in, in person? Yeah. Hagler Hearns, for sure. Oh, man. I think I'm not to agree with you because we we watch, like my boyfriend and I, we will watch, when we watch fights, we tend to watch those all the time on YouTube. Yeah. And those, we just love them. Those those fights, that one, yeah. I, I can't think of any other ones, but. There's, there's so many good ones. I'm going to go, that oh, one. The Ali Frazier won at Madison Square Garden, fight of the century. You had uh, Frank Sinatra is taking the, the photos for, I always mess up, it's either time or life, and I never remember which one it is. Um, but, yeah, that one, I would like to have been there for that one. Ali Frazier. That one, too. And yeah. I think I might have wanted to been there for all three, for the whole trilogy. Yeah. Otero Gotti and Mickey Ward. Oh. oh. <laughs> the, again, <laughs> people can... Okay, Talk guys. about how good or not good they were, you know, like level wise. We're, yeah. oh my God, did they oh, put on a show? Yes, I, those, I would have loved to be there for that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and if I had a time machine, I would actually want to go back and watch Jack Johnson, James Jeffries in 1910. Oh, wow. only, only because of Jack Johnson to me is so iconic because what he was, I mean, he's the Jackie Robinson of boxing, right? He wasn't the first black world champion, he, Joe Gans was, but still, glamour division, the stuff he had to endure during his career, and he still lived life on his terms. I would Absolutely. love to see that fight. Absolutely. And the other thing is, Henry Ford, I'm I'm positive I'm going to have this story correct. They used Jack Johnson liked to drive his cars really, really fast. Yeah. 
and he would get pulled over, get tickets, and they'd always say he was driving a Ford. Henry Ford would send him a new car every year because he was like, this is the best publicity we've ever had in our life. Oh my the Ford God. Corporation would send him a car. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story about Jack Johnson and speeding tickets. He, because I, you know, I'm a big historian. Yeah, yeah. He uh, got pulled over in a small town once and they, they used to take the money then. And the, the sheriff told him $50 and Jeff, Jack Johnson handed him a hundred. And he's like, why'd you give me a hundred? And he told him because I'll be back in about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Quite a character, quite a, quite a great pugilist. Um, and did have to endure a lot of nonsense, unfortunately. So just last thing for me, Keisha, and again, thank you so much for spending time thank with you us. Thank you very much. Um, so you do plan to fight in the future. Do you have any opponents in mind or just that's still to be determined? Or I don't know. I've, I've never, ever had opponents in mind. It's, it's, it's whatever offer I get, you know, if it makes sense. They're in my weight class, obviously, but... Um, I, I, there's nobody in particular. I've never been the one that, like, oh, I want that. I want, I want her. I want her. There's a lot of belts out there, you know. There's, there's, there's a, a lot of belts, you know. If, if there's a belt, an opponent, I don't care what opponent it is. I would, I would want to fight them. You know? Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Keisha. Keisha. I want, can I mention something? Really? Absolutely. I wanted to talk just a little bit. Um, of what I'm also doing. Um, I don't know, if Anthony, if, um, if you've seen me promote this. I kind of had to stop because I was in transition to here to Florida. But I do do free boxing for um, for healthcare workers, frontline workers, people who are experiencing depression or loss of job due to this pandemic and sexual abuse and domestic violence. I offer free boxing on the weekends. So, you know, they can reach out to me and that's, that's like a program and, and a project that I'm really working on. Would, would they reach out to you on the website that I have on the page and in the chat? They can, or it would be easier if they just inbox me on any of my social media channels, like okay. Facebook, YouTube. Um, yeah, that would be the easier way because and they would just there's a link on that website to I, I, at least I don't, I can't remember. Well, that's good. My email is on there, so yeah, they can that's do that. Good work. They, they, could, they could contact you via email too on that program? Yes. Okay. And, and again, like Al said, you can't fake kindness. And, and I know that you've been, you know, involved in healthcare, so you have a close relationship with those workers. So props to you, especially through this pandemic for doing that. And, and again, doing good for the community and, yeah. and, you know, an awesome gesture. So Absolutely. Thank you. So, yeah, I was doing that at Gleason's on the weekend, and now I want to do that here in Miami as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Keisha, Fire, Thank McLeod, you. the champ. Can you shout out? Do good. Al, go big on that, Al. Go big. You want me to go big on it? Go big. Too sweet to be sour. Keisha, Fire, McLeod, the champion of the world. <laughs> yeah, you guys, until next time, peace. Love you all. And please follow me on YouTube, okay? <laughs> yeah, we'll put that in the chat too. <laughs>